This is a note. Notes are the foundation for Western music notation. But not all notes used to look like this. They looked like this. These are called neumes, otherwise known as Gregorian chant notation or square note notation. Neumes consist of a note or a group of notes that are to be sung on a single syllable. But how did the neume come to be? Let's travel back to the 2nd century BC of ancient Greece. The first existence of music notation was to believe to have derived from Greek orthography. Ancient Greek diacritics can be seen on the Siculus epitaph, the oldest surviving complete musical notation. But scholars believe that pneumatic notation stemmed from accentuation signs of Greek and Roman literature, attributed to the philosopher Aristophanes of Byzantium. Accent marks in Greek literature indicated the rising and falling of natural speech patterns. Acutus, or acute, indicated the rising of the voice, while gravis, or grav, indicated the falling of the voice. By the 9th century AD, these marks became the basic figures of Gregorian chant notation. The acutus evolved into a verga, and the gravis evolved into a punctum. Earlier neum notation used the verga to represent a higher pitch than its predecessor note, while the punctum was used to show lower pitches. These neumes were in campo aperto, or free form wavy lines above the text. The placement of notes acted more as an aid to memorizing the songs due to the fact that memorization was, at the time, more prominent than simply reading them. This practice is called oratorical or chironomic and is based off of the upward and downward motions of the choir master's hand, giving no indication of the intervals between tones. The Cantatorium of St. Gall is the earliest extant musical manuscript using neumes, which dates all the way back to the year 922. Diastemic neumes are also used as notation, the word diastemic deriving from the Greek word for interval. They indicate the relative intervalic relationship between notes and are more informative than oratorical neumes. The diastemic neumes were placed at various distances around an imaginary line that represented a given pitch. As the 10th century came to an end, the imaginary line became real. Starting out as a mere scratch and parchment paper, a second line was added and the idea of color indicated the pitches of the two lines. The top line was color-coded red, indicating the pitch of F, while the lower line was color-coded green, indicating the pitch of C. In the 11th century, music theologist Guido D'Arezzo fabricated a four-line staff. The use of color diminished with the invention of the F and C clefs. These clefs were created to be able to be placed anywhere on the staff in order to indicate different pitches. Square pneumatic notation became the general form of notation and the main form for Gregorian chant. Gregorian chant got its name by the man who created it, Pope Gregory, who directed the monasteries and churches to teach official songs for worship. It is important to know that Gregorian chant is monophonic and has no meter. These notes are read from left to right and from bottom to top, unless indicated by a specific neum, and aren't sung in major or minor keys, but rather in modes. So now that we know the fundamentals of Gregorian chant, how do we read square notes? Looking at square notes may be confusing, but by comparing them to modern notation, we are able to break them down. First, let's remember that neums consist of a note or a group of notes that are sung on a single syllable. The basic note heads for Gregorian chant are the punctum, the verga, and the rhombus. The punctum, verga, and rhombus represent a single note. These note heads technically have no differences, except for the fact that its shape varied over the composer's penmanship. Nevertheless, all note heads can be said to represent the modern transcription of an eighth note. Now, let's go over some different combinations of neumes and compare them to their modern equivalents. The podotus, the clevis, the scandius, the perectus, the climacus recepinus, and the verga subtripunctus. Although Gregorian chant is meterless, there are some symbols that subtly indicate rhythm. The punctum mora, which is adding a dot to a note. The epicema, which means to hold the note or to slow it down, kind of like a retardando in modern music. And a repercussive neum, a note that is held by having more than one of the same note in a row. Other note symbols in square notation include the quilisma, which is the most controversial note in neum notation. The quilisma is marked by a jagged squiggle in the middle. 
But the controversy lies on whether the cholisma implies a tremulous sound, to treat it as an ornament or as a lightening of the voice. Liquescent neumes are smaller notes that are attached to normal neumes. They act as a warning sign for careful pronunciation. Here are combinations of liquescent neumes. The epiphonus, the practice liquescence, and the scandicus liquescence. A flat can also be added to a note to indicate that the note is lower to half step, and sometimes a flat is written at the beginning of the staff, acting as a key signature, but it is the only accidental used in Gregorian chant notation. A custis is a thin note written at the end of a line to indicate which note is to appear in the next line. Lastly, vertical lines can be drawn to separate musical phrases and sometimes act as a breath mark, letting the singer take a pause. From ancient Greek orthography to square notes, the neum was used as the main form of notation for the medieval era. Not only was it used for Gregorian chant, but secular music of the troubadours and minnesingers also adopted the formula. The use of square notation spread throughout southern and western Europe and continued the practice all the way into the 16th century. Although musical notation has developed immensely since the Middle Ages, many still carry on the old traditions of Gregorian chant.